So, we have come to the most beautiful, joyful part of the retreat, possibly. <laughs> no promises. But it's always a wonderful way to end a meditation retreat with some practice of loving kindness. And uh, this is a practice I encourage everybody to do, even if only for five or ten minutes a day, at the end of the day or when you wake, just having some thoughts of loving kindness towards yourself and towards all beings can start to really transform the mind and incline the mind to the feelings and the emotions of loving kindness. So loving kindness really does become a place you can abide, a real Brahma Vihara, a beautiful dwelling for the mind. And the other beautiful thing about loving kindness practice, of course, it leads to samadhi, and it leads there, it's particularly focused on happiness. So it has this special quality of being particularly enjoyable and easeful. But also, if you do have a mind that thinks a lot, loving kindness can be very beneficial. Thoughts of loving kindness can displace, substitute thoughts of ill will or thoughts of random wandering. <laughs> We can just introduce a thought of loving kindness instead at any time throughout the day. Especially maybe if you're feeling a little bit stressed or tense or upset about something. Sometimes you can just pause, take a moment, you know, give yourself some sympathy and just say to yourself, may I be well, may I be at peace, may I be at ease, or whatever words resonate for you. So it's really good to train in these practices and to have a few different practices that you can use at different times, depending on the state of your mind. So this morning, because we don't have time to learn metta as a cultivation from the beginning, we're going to share loving kindness, starting, we'll see where we begin, but eventually spreading loving kindness to all beings everywhere. So if you do have your own way of practicing, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to follow these suggestions. I always like to say that every guided meditation is just an invitation. It's not an instruction. It's just an invitation for you to follow along and see where it goes. So if something's not working for you and you feel that the loving kindness needs to develop in a different way, allow it to be spontaneous, allow it to be natural whatever works for you, okay? Sometimes loving kindness is just being kind to the feelings that arise that are not particularly pleasant. Sometimes we're not in the mood to practice love and it can feel almost like a struggle. Meditation should never be a struggle, so just relax any effort if that happens to you and hold even that frustration or anxiety or sadness, whatever it is, hold that with loving kindness, the way a mother would regard a child, the way a mother would soothe and comfort a child. Yeah? So let's begin by gently closing our eyes and finding a really, really comfortable position for our bodies, even more comfortable than usual because this is the practice of kindness to our body and mind. So if you notice any part of the body is feeling a little bit tight or perhaps there's some pressure on your ankles or too much strain in your knees, then please adjust them kindly, gently and mindfully. Asking your body how you can make your body more comfortable and at ease. And also noticing the position of your mouth. Can you allow a little smile to emerge from within? Maybe reflected on the lips. As you reflect on the retreat 
and all the wholesome qualities you've been developing, the beautiful opportunity to turn within. So just allow yourself to feel a sense of gladness, of satisfaction, even of joy. that you are on this path, the path to the end of all suffering. And just gently allow mindfulness combined with kindness, like the light and the warmth of the sun to soak through your body from the top of the head, or if you wish, starting from the tips of the toes, right through. It's as though you're basking in the rays of the sun and just soaking them up with hardly any effort involved. And that warm golden sunshine is just relaxing and easing any tension or tightness, any aches or pains that you may be experiencing right now, giving them space to be. Just shining this gentle, loving warmth. Perhaps noticing if your body responds by maybe softening or feelings of tingling or warmth. and allowing any pleasure, however subtle, to relax you even more. Just receiving the warmth and the kindness, the warmth and the light of the sun. Perhaps if it helps, even imagining that you're in the presence of a very compassionate, benevolent being or beings, somewhere safe, somewhere you feel completely at ease. Perhaps you can imagine yourself in the presence of the Buddha himself, maybe surrounded by enlightened nuns and monks. Noble lay women and laymen all your good friends. And you're just soaking in this feeling of love, allowing yourself to receive.
knowing you're completely uncharged, regarded with kindly, compassionate eyes. No matter who you are, who you take yourself to be. And as the feelings of well-being and relaxation increase, allow yourself to tune into them, to any sense of pleasure in the body or mind. And if you wish, bringing to mind someone in your life, maybe a dear friend or a nephew or niece, perhaps a little pet. A spiritual friend. And just allow these feelings of well-being to start spreading out towards them as though they too are now being basked in the light and the warmth of the sun, suffused with a golden glow of loving-kindness. enveloping them from head to toe. Perhaps you might see an image of this person or being, or just get a sense of who they are, the qualities of this person that you really admire and respect. Regarding this being with kindly eyes. In the same way that a Buddha would regard you. Sending them your loving kindness. Perhaps even wishing them well. with thoughts such as, may you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be at ease. Choosing those wishes that would really resonate for this person in your life. Connecting to the meaning of those words and listening, pausing in the space between each phrase to allow the mind to incline in the direction of the feeling of loving kindness. as though each phrase is a seed that you're planting in fertile soil. 
and the silence between each phrase is where the sunshine and the rain fall down on that seed and nourish it until it blossoms into the feeling of love. So staying connected with your body, perhaps especially the area in the chest or any part of the body that feels easy to be with. as you continue to suffuse this being with loving kindness. Seeing them relax, be at ease. Just enjoying giving without expecting anything in return, without looking for particular feelings or emotions, but just content to plant the seeds. And after some time, gently bidding this person farewell, thanking them for allowing you to share loving kindness. And allowing this loving kindness to continue to spread perhaps imagining loving kindness like a very soft, gentle energy spreading 
from each and every cell of your body spreading outwards into this room to all the other retreatants sitting here. Or maybe you experience loving kindness like a golden light Spreading from your heart and basking, bathing everybody in this room with its golden glow. All these spiritual friends who've been supporting our practice. People just like me who are not perfect but are so sincerely walking this path. May all of us continue to practice the Dhamma. To hear the teachings and be surrounded by spiritual friends. May we all be happy. May we be safe. May we be peaceful. May we be free. Free from danger, free from suffering. free from physical and mental pain. Imagine everybody in this room just relaxing, feeling held. Being bathed by loving kindness that increases in its power the more it's shared. And just allow the metta to flow effortlessly. Filling up every corner of this room. All beings, human or even the little millipedes, perhaps any invisible beings that are here right now. May all of us present be happy. Be peaceful, be free. And soon this loving kindness builds in strength and in power and start spreading out of this room through the doors, the windows, and throughout this whole compound, the whole of Jhana Grove, including the forest where all the little kangaroos and their babies hop around.
all the birds in the sky. The little worms in the earth. Spreading down the road to Bodhinyana Monastery, where many monks and lay guests are practicing well. May all beings in this area, in Jhana Grove, in Bodhinyana, and beyond to the whole of Serpentine, may they all receive this powerful loving-kindness. May they be protected, safe and well. And just allow this loving-kindness to keep on spreading naturally, gradually, as far as it will, down into the city of Perth and across the whole of Australia, perhaps lingering in places where you have family or friends, spreading the healing power of love protection and safety. So that all beings can experience, can share the peace and ease. Of loving kindness. Even for a moment, they can stop their arguments. Re-establish trust. All those who are in the hospitals, perhaps reaching the end of their lives. May they all be happy, free from fear. May they all be free. Imagining this loving kindness spreading across the oceans to Singapore, the whole of Southeast Asia. Throughout this whole planet Earth, spreading this golden glow to all beings, those who right now are happy experiencing the results of their good karma. And to those who are suffering, living in fear or in pain, to beings who are hungry beings involved in terrible wars. May all beings, whoever they are, wherever they're from, may all beings at this moment experience peace. Be free from hatred, free from fear. Be safe, be happy, be at peace. All 
all beings, animals, insects, birds, reptiles, creatures of the seas, visible beings and invisible beings. This metta doesn't discriminate, it reaches down to the deepest, darkest hells. And right up into the heaven realms, the Brahma realms. Wherever living beings are found, may all beings near or far, human or non-human. May all beings be happy, be peaceful, be at ease. Imagining this planet Earth just glowing, radiating loving kindness that even heals the environment, the forests, the oceans, and spreads outwards into the universe as far as is imaginable to any other forms of life that may exist. And just resting with this expansive sense of loving kindness, just resting here for a while. Enjoying the peace, the ease. Of a heart of loving kindness. And now gently, gradually, slowly, bringing that loving kindness back to this planet Earth, to this place, to Jhana Grove and the room we're sitting in now. Bringing it back into your own body. Allowing any feelings of ease, of softness, of relaxation to fill up your body and mind. And imagine yourself receiving once again this loving kindness as though you were basking in the light and warmth of the sun. A 
as though the Buddha was right here with you, regarding you with benevolent, compassionate eyes. Wishing that you too be free from all suffering. No matter who you are or what you've done, what you think about yourself, how you measure yourself, the Buddha doesn't see any of this. Imagine such pure loving kindness, suffusing every little cell of your body, healing your heart, healing the past, Offering you unconditional forgiveness, unconditional love. And allowing this loving kindness to extend to every part of yourself. your one-year-old self, your four-year-old self, the child that was hurt, maybe the child that was so unfairly abused. The part that never felt she or he was good enough, bringing that all in right now into the presence of powerful loving kindness, the loving kindness of a Buddha, of a fully enlightened being. And receiving complete forgiveness, complete unconditional love. Allowing whatever emotions arise just to be held in this safe, soft container of love, of metta. Of compassion and goodwill. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Purgala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariyapana Sabe Itiho Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anariya Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Winiparika Awe Rahontu Abya Paja Hontu Anigahontu 
Sukiatanam Pavihavantu Dukha Munjantu Yadalada Sampatito Mawe Gachantu Kamasaka Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. <laughs> it was a very sweet and gentle Sadhu, which is appropriate because we do need to allow ourselves to feel those tender feelings and just emerge gently, go lightly, carefully, kindly. Because you probably are quite sensitive after a retreat. So please, as you do make your way from here, remember to protect your mind, protect the senses, guard them carefully, and see if you can keep those wholesome states developing. Forgiving yourself for your mistakes or your perceived mistakes. We often think our mistakes are much bigger than they are. <laughs> they just make what make you human, right? None of us are perfect, so. And we can trust that others will forgive us too. So, this is the end of the retreat but not the end of the practice. So keep those drops coming into the jar. And the one bit I forgot to say earlier in the talk is that you can put them in from any angle. You don't have to practice in a sequence. The path is never linear. So whatever you can do at any given time, maybe you don't have time to practice one day in meditation, but you have plenty of opportunity to practice right speech plenty of opportunity to care for the people you live with or to listen to someone who's struggling, to listen to yourself. So we can always do something. And that way the path develops in a beautiful integrated way. It's not only about meditation, it's about the whole Eightfold Path, which is why we come to monasteries, why we come to retreat centers, but we also have to develop our communities outside so that we can have opportunity to develop each and every factor. So you're all very welcome, of course, to keep coming here, but also as we do develop more and more monasteries and centers around the world, I think the Buddhist Fellowship are developing a huge facility over there. I'm not quite sure what it is. It must be a big retreat center. No, just of our new premises. Right. Yeah, we will move out from our rented uh, premises at yours and move to our new premises Fantastic. by uh, the third quarter of next year. Brilliant. And how many people can is the capacity going to hold? Um, the hall is about the same as the current one, but we can use the downstairs uh, audiovisual uh, as Wonderful. well. So, yeah. yeah, upstairs and downstairs. Fantastic. Yeah. And of course, you're all invited to England, but not all at the same time. <laughs> we don't have such a big place. And I, actually, it's going to stay small. Um, it's a house on a particular plot, and so I don't intend to, it ever to become a big retreat centre. But for the Bikuni Sangha, it's about the quality that counts. You know, it's a hard thing to do to renounce the world and to live with other people. And the life, in a sense, becomes quite small compared to what we're used to. But it becomes very values-aligned and very meaningful. So I think we're going to keep it fairly small, but you can visit any time. And the most important thing, again, as we said this morning, is to just keep associating with the wise. Keep giving yourself opportunities to practice, to hear the Dhamma, read the Dhamma, read the suttas, get together to meditate or to discuss. Yeah, it's not enough just to listen. We have to understand and clarify our understanding. 
receive feedback as well from our friends. Sometimes the feedback's not easy to hear, but it's important for us. So it's really the key to the path. So keep on exposing yourself to these teachings. It's a precious human life. The Buddha said there are very few opportunities. If we're born in the hell realms or the animal realms, even the deva realms, there's a sutta, Anguttara 8, 29, which was jotted down by myself today. And it says, even if you're born in those realms, and even if there is a Buddha who's awakened in this world to true knowledge and vision, still it's not a great opportunity compared to being born in the human realm. So we have a human life and we're in contact with the teachings of the Buddha. So we have the chance to develop right view and the rest of the path. So all of you are well on the way. All you have to do is just continue being patient. Patience is such an important quality that sees you through. And continue walking on this path. Never give up. So that's all for me. I don't know if the organizers want to say anything to end the retreat. Um, yes, we will have some announcements. But before Aya leave and before the announcements, uh, we would, uh, on behalf of the retreatants, may I seek uh, your forgiveness for whatever uh, we have done by body, speech and mind to cause you any irritation, uh, a big one or a small one. <laughs> We ask for your forgiveness. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And of course, sadhu. from our side, and I think I speak for Ajahn Brahm and Ajahn Brahmali and the whole Sangha, there's nothing that you've done to cause us any irritation, small or large. You've inspired us with your practice. Lay people can inspire the Sangha. You know, it, it goes both ways. And I find it very inspiring and a great privilege to have had the opportunity to share a little bit of what I've learned over my own practice life. So equally, if the Sangha, the monks or nuns have done anything in any way, I'm sure unintentionally, <laughs> but even if it was intentional, unlikely, if it was unintentional or intentional, please forgive us and uh, keep coming back. <laughs> Thank you, Aya. Okay.